Good morning. Welcome to my channel. January 16th, 2024. I am We Are Your Them. Wait, what is going on around here? I came across another video last night on YouTube. I'll put it in the links, but I went and found an article and uh, what's up with the doctors in this country? This is the uh, at least the second, probably the third of something like this happening. And this one happened in Milwaukee, Oregon. And this is from the Portland Tribune. I'm using this under creative copyrights. I want to give my opinion. I have been a special needs mother for 40 years. I've dealt with a lot of doctors. And this that I see happening should not be happening. What is going on? The doctors in medical school, nurses, what are they being taught about taking care of people and do no harm? We'll start with the first article, and then we're going to get to Lisa Edwards. Same thing happened to her. And then the third the third story I'm going to do is about a little brain-dead baby that was sent home that ended up dying again. Something's wrong. Man in Milwaukee police custody dies during transport from a hospital. After refusing to leave a local hospital... Man unresponsive upon arrival at Northeast Portland Center. There's the hospital. Okay, the man, uh, he died. We know that. On December 12th. Um, don't know the name. Okay. According to Milwaukee police, officers were dispatched Tuesday on a call of an unwanted individual who was refusing to leave a local hospital. When the officers arrived, the hospital staff informed them that the man was being discharged from the emergency room and refused to leave the premise, even when offered a ride to a local shelter. Officers learned the man had several active arrest warrants issued by Clackamas and Multnomah counties. The officers eventually determined that the man was unable to care for himself. And they would not be able to serve the arrest warrants because the jail would not accept a person in his condition. Because the jail would not accept a person in his condition. Well, no, duh. The hospitals are supposed to be trained to take care of somebody in this condition. And I don't know if he died of a drug overdose or a stroke or a heart attack. Who the hell knows? But in any case, what do they do in discharging people that can't even walk? Why? What's going on? The Milwaukee officers put the man under a police a peace officer hold, which allows law enforcement to take the person into custody if they are deemed dangerous to self or any other persons and in need of immediate care, custody, or treatment for mental illness. Why are they throwing our mentally ill people out into the streets? Okay, so that's what happened there. Uh, I don't know much about it. I'm probably going to do another video about it sometime. Let's let's go right on over here to Lisa Edwards. This happened in February of 2023. Kind of uh, same story. Uh, and and uh, there's no, no criminal charges after a woman dies while in Knoxville police custody. Well, here we are. What, what is wrong? What, what's going on here? Let's hear what happened to her. I'm just going to give you a short version because I don't want to make my videos too long. I want you to have the information and then you can go look. I'll link the articles down in the uh, description. Okay. Edwards became unresponsive February 5th while in police custody after allegedly refusing to leave a Knoxville hospital after being treated. She died the next day at Fort Sanders Regional Medical Center. According to the district attorney, Edward's death was caused by an ischemic stroke due to atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Okay, so let's just hear what happened, the timeline. We're going to go to the timeline. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation released new information as well, saying that Edwards flew to Knoxville from a nursing home in Rhode Island on February 4th. The DA's office said Edwards suffered a stroke that left her wheel wheelchair bound, and at some point during the flight from Rhode Island to Knoxville, she began complaining of abdominal pain, according to the DA's office. Once the plane landed at McGee Tyson Airport, paramedics were called to take Edwards to the 
Blount Memorial Hospital, where she was evaluated and diagnosed with constipation before she was discharged. The TBI investigation found. So number one hospital discharged her. The DA's office said that Edwards sought additional treatment on February 4th at Fort Sanders Regional Medical Center, where she was admitted and observed overnight. Around 6.55 a.m. on February 5th, Edwards was discharged. The DA's office said because she refused to leave. She couldn't walk. She was wheelchair bound. They discharged her from the hospital with no wheelchair. I don't know if it got left at the airport I don't know if it got left at the other hospital. I have no idea, but they said, you got to go. So they called the cops on her. I'm all over again. Security offers issued a trans- trespass warning for disruptive behavior trespassing to Edwards and then called the Knoxville Police Department, the DA's office said. According to the release, Knoxville police decided to arrest Edwards for criminal trespass after she refused to leave and called a patrol vehicle to take Edwards. Oh, and then called a patrol vehicle to take Edwards due to her mobility issues. Once she was in the back of the cruiser and being taken to Roger D. Wilson Detention Facility, the officer stopped to deal with another motorist and saw that Edwards had become unresponsive, the DA's office said. And then they called the ambulance and did CPR and got her, you know, going overnight. And then she died the next day in the same hospital that had just thrown her out saying there was nothing wrong with her. If you're in medical school, uh, pay attention. This is not, this is not a way to run a hospital. We don't throw people out in the streets and call the cops on them when there obviously is something wrong with them. I think there needs to be answers. Uh, I don't know. Where, where does a person go? The last two places on earth that you think you can go for safety, if you're not a criminal, is the hospital and the cops. Two people. Hospital. Nothing wrong. Go home. Which brings me to my next story. Back in, uh, and this is from the local 10.com, someplace in Florida. Okay, May 27th, 2023. Rotting in the bed, Florida parents accused of neglecting comatose three-year-old to death. Takesha Williams, Ephraim Allen, face charges of manslaughter. Okay. In a press release, deputies said fire crews were called to a report of an unresponsive child on the afternoon of May 12th. According to Local 10... Orlando news partner, WKMG, first responders said upon arrival they found the three-year-old connected to a ventilator, though the boy didn't have a pulse. He was taken to the hospital where he later died, despite several life-saving measures, according to law enforcement. Okay, so uh, it's horrible, you know, he was there to rot, but I want to know what kind of psychological weird game they are putting these parents through. Um, What had happened is... uh, He'd been in a near drowning in uh, 2020 and then taken to the hospital, hooked up to the ventilator, and the doctor said he's brain dead. Brain dead is dead. That means you're dead. You're not going to live. You're not going to come alive. You're not going to improve. There's nothing. And so these doctors, instead of just, you know, put, you know, just saying, look, he's dead, they let these young parents, 24 and 25 years old, uh, Take the baby home on a ventilator. For what reason? I don't know. The baby was already dead. And, um, you know, then the pandemic happened. Or Anyways, the nurse ended up uh, leaving the job. They didn't get another nurse. The baby ended up, uh, you know, his body was rotting from the inside out um, because they weren't taking care of him. But what kind of psychological weird brain game are these doctors playing? That's what I want to know. Um, I just don't know, have, I just don't know what else I can say about it. It's horrible. And, and the parents, if they're going to take a dead baby home, I guess they should, um, keep the baby clean and on the ventilator. But why did the doctor send a dead baby home? And why are they sending people out of the hospital that can't walk and can't talk and obviously have issues? Why? Why is this happening? What, why are there doctors 
willing to stop children's puberty and give them mutilating operations. Something is very wrong. Um, you know, I'm watching a lot of show about the Marxists and the socialism and all this. And I think that, you know, our country is being overtaken from the inside out. The schools, the doctors, the law firms, all of it, all of it. There's another doctor in uh, Texas. He had just graduated from medical school. He came out. I want to do a video about him. And then there's another pediatrician doctor up in Oregon, Northern Oregon, that she's speaking out about these sex changes too. Um, so there are doctors coming out of the woodwork. You know, us normal people that depend on you doctors need more of you. We need the medical schools to go back to teaching, teaching the doctors first do no harm and then teach them you can't just throw people that can't take care of themselves out onto the streets and call the cops on them. What are the cops going to do? He can't walk. He was drooling. I see people giving, you know, people narking three or four times in a public park trying to save their life. We're all told, you know, we need to save their lives, be compassionate, while we watch them rot to death in parks, and now hospitals just have, you know, uh, you know, just the, the freedom to just be like, oh no, we're not dealing with that part of society. Well, that's not the deal you took when you went to medical school. You didn't say, I'll only take care of this kind and not that kind. Oh my God. Oh my God. All right, everyone. That's it for today. Have a great Tuesday. Bye.